So to begin this game we're going to need to create some data of a random nature. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going around and asking members of the audience to give us some random numbers. And then we're going to be plotting these random numbers on our SPC chart and then we're going to be analysing what we see. So if you're in a large audience, say a conference centre, you can go around the room of the audience and ask this question and get people to give you a reply and then plot the data. If you're in a small group and you don't have enough data to plot the initial set of data 20 points, then you might want to ask people to consider their family and friends and add this data in. 29. 23. 15. 26. 7. So we plotted those effectively 21 random numbers on our SPC chart. So we know these are random numbers, yet we can see even from those random numbers there are some strange patterns that have appeared in the graph. So for example we've got a trend of 4 running upwards here. We've also got a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 above the mean line. Now in some cases people would say, well a trend of 4 is significant. You know, we need to take action, we need to ask questions. Or on other occasions people might say, well that run of 6 is significant as well. But we know this is randomly generated data. Nevertheless, we've got patterns, and this is why we need to make sure when we're observing patterns in the data, they need to be significant. So now we're going to implement a system change. And to simulate this, we're going to be asking a slightly different question to our audience, which will hopefully generate some lower numbers. Nine. One. Seven. So I hope you can see that change of system has had an immediate effect on our SPC graph. We've got some special cause variation over those slightly lower numbers. And this is the essence of SPC charts really, is that it understood when we were putting in purely random numbers at the start that these numbers were in essence random and it didn't flag up any rules for us to go and challenge. But when we made that change to the system, pretty soon enough we were given a pattern of data more than seven points below the mean for us to go and question. And this hopefully will happen in your projects. You'll have a set of data and when something statistically significant happens, like when we change the rules of our game, we have some point to go and reference and to go and ask what's happening in the system. Is it an improvement or decline? Can we sustain the improvement? Or if it's a decline, can we work to address it? And now we're going to play the final part of the game, which will hopefully highlight further that significance of seven points. So we're going to gather a group of eight volunteers to play this game, but it's best played in large audiences, and I've played this in conferences of up to 50 people. So I've got a list of famous people's birthdays, past and present, and I'm going to read out the month of their birthday. Before I do this, people are going to have a guess of what the month might be and I'm going to ask them to put their hands in the air if they think it's in the second half of the year, so from July to December, and their hands on their knees if it's in the first half of the year, so January to June. If they're right when I read out the birthday month, then they're going to remain standing, and if they're wrong, they're going to sit down. And what I'm going to try and demonstrate to you is, using this kind of random guessing nature, how quickly it takes for a whole room to sit down. Queen Elizabeth II, if you think her birthday's in the start of the year, the first six months, could you put your hands on your knees? If you think it's the second six months of the year, could you put your hands in the air? Okay. So this is round one. So Queen Elizabeth II's birthday is in April. So those with your hands on your knees, could you stay standing? Those with the hands in your air, could you please sit down? So there we go. We've almost lost half the room in our first round. <laughs> so the second round, I'm now going to ask. So Abraham Lincoln, famous American president. So again, could you put your hands on your knees if you think it's the first half of the year? And if you could put your hands in the air if it's the second half of the year? Okay. So Abraham Lincoln was born in February, so that's a two, so... <laughs> so in our mocked up game we had a winner after only two rounds, but when you do this in larger groups of audiences, you'll often find a winner arises after about six or seven rounds. And hopefully this will give you the impression of why trends of seven are needed for statistical significance.